Welcome back, my friend, to a very special episode. For what lies ahead exemplifies a kind of cosmic justice. A justice so pure that even the most nihilistic among you will begin to reconsider meaning after all. But first things first, let's catch you up to speed. We have finished ransacking train station HQ without conflict. We're feeling a bit versatile, so we're kicking things off with the Milano Krieg combo. The latter will then be swapped out later for the Car 98K. Jeep offered a nice little distraction there. Thank you, Jeep. And it appears that Jeep is coming back around. What a lovely opportunity to show my thanks with the C4. Hmm, they seem to be averse to gratitude. Rude. But my friend, I insist. Let me just leave this here for you. What does this guy have against windows? Jesus. Okay, we just saw one run up the stairs there for top bank. We got Jeep 1 below and Jeep 2 quickly approaching. It seems I might have gotten myself in a bit of a jackpot here. Oh well, at least our getaway vehicles are no longer an option. Okay, I just heard Bank jump, and I'm assuming he's coming for Jeep 1 below. Shit, I did not mean to do that. That pool was an accident. Okay, I'm, I'm officially confused. Where the hell is this little prick? Ah, okay. Yeah, they're still clueless. And Tack Rover just hopped out across the street. We're just making it too easy today. Okay, let's reset. We'll grab box number two from our scav, finish looting PD in search of a dead silence, and then we'll get a jump on this incoming loadout. No luck here. Maybe our attack over friend left one behind. And so he did. Loadout drop inbound. Hmm, looks like maybe two crates. Hard to tell. Let's move fast. Gas is closing. Get to the new safe zone. Okay, the other loadout recipient must be close by. Let's get to higher ground and see what we see. so close to death and has no idea. Oh, and we have a death beacon that is now summoning us. All right, Rose, no time for foreplay. Let's get this over with.
How rude. Don't let it get this guy. And now we're about to begin that glorious sequence that I alluded to at the outset of this little adventure. Look folks, I I'm not breaking any news when I tell you that Verdansk has been infested with incel, gutless, degenerate, self-loathing cheaters for quite some time. I, like you, I'm sure, have had more than my fair share of encounters with these dregs of society. I've killed some to be sure, but I've lost to their hacks many, many times over. Before dying and it become blatantly obvious via death cam, there are a few telltale signs that you're up against a cheater. If you're ghosted and there's absolutely no way they could have seen you prior, yet the instant your line of sight opens with an enemy, you're being lasered, there's a very strong chance you're up against a cheater with wall hacks. And if somehow you survive this initial engagement, you only have one of two possible options of survival. Stun grenades or a quick snipe to their forehead. Now this little douchebag is rotating all the way over from the other side of the hill. He's probably coming from hospital. Now I'm ghosted and he has no way of knowing where I am. And yet, the second I come around this corner, freeze. At this moment, I am 90% sure that this pathetic shell of a person is using wall hacks. First, I'm gonna plant the sentry gun to stall his push, then retreat the plate behind the shed. I'm going to peek to gain information and, well, you look at that, pre-fired even before I come around the corner. Hacking confirmed. And well, I don't have any stuns, so let's go ahead with option two. What a joke. And death comes, he like, wait, how? How was right, motherfucker. How, how do you spend money on cheats for a game and still get quick scoped in the head by little old me? That is just embarrassing. That is, oh man, that is shameful. You, you are a joke. I, I mean, in the world of first person shooters, is, is there anything more bitch made than having a computer code see and aim for you and you still get outgunned? Actually, yes. Yes, there is. Let's continue. Now, chances are this gutless little twat is going to win Gulag and come back for their guns. So here I had the clever idea to reposition the sentry gun right next to his still bleeding corpse. Now, what would have been more sinister and, and even more clever is if I hid his guns elsewhere. But oh well. And who knows, maybe there's cheats where you can like see like, your guns anyway. I don't know. Oh, and if there is still any doubt that they were cheating, my recent influx of spectators is the uh, final layer of confirmation. The plan now is to grab another UAV and then get atop this building to await the return. Priorities have shifted completely at this point, okay? Winning this game is, is no longer priority. The priority is ridding this lobby of this cheating cancer once and for all. Contact failed, stand down. All right, this little red dot over here is complicating matters. Let's zip up here as fast as possible and hope they don't see us. Of course. God damn it, McLean. You're always fucking up a good plan. Oh, fuck it. We have time. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. Damn it, did you hear that? Shipper is flying back in. Let's hurry up and try to get an angle on the stairwell. Yeah, that's his bitch ass coughing right there, I know it. Bringing down an airstrike. This is striker 3 1, good copy. Strike get back. Where the fuck is he? No hits on that run. Alright, plan B. He has walls, so let's hope he follows me inside. I'll have a much better chance of quick scoping his bitch ass again in here than out in the open. Or wait a second. Come and get me, you dumb fuck. Come on, take the bait. Smile, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you think you can take me? What's better than killing a cheater once because you're better? Killing them twice because you're also smarter. <laughs> 
Now look, people, I'm not one to teabag, okay? And I'm certainly not one to shoot dead bodies. It's tacky. But fuck this guy, okay? Our fallen spectators who were cheated out of their experience, that they deserve some gratuitous celebration. It's for them. Recon's up. Okay, now that we're past that little interlude, let's return to the matter at hand. Alright, looks like the play is Superstore. Enemy UAV overhead! Hostile dropping into the area, watch the skies! Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. Was that justice or what, people? I mean, my god, what a fucking douchebag. Let's hope that this new anti-cheat that they've announced is the real deal. I mean, should it be something that they're like advertising? I, I mean, no. Should it have already been here? Y yes, okay. I mean, let me know, wh what do you think of the idea that they've essentially been allowing cheaters to run amok this past year in order to apply machine learning to absorb all the fuckery so that the Vanguard anti-cheat is as robust as possible? I mean, after all, the source code for this engine was compromised anyway, so, I mean, Verdansk was chalked. And while we're looking ahead, I guess now is as good a time as any to let you in on the future of this channel. Enemy UAV overhead. I'm a Battlefield guy, going all the way back to Battlefield 2 on the PC. And Bad Company 2, that was one of my favorite multiplayer experiences ever. Hold that thought. I mean, destructible environments, it just changed everything. Cowering behind a wall, I'll just blow up the wall. A team camping in a building? Cool, cool. How about I just destroy the entire building with a tank? Something I didn't remember seeing since that, uh, remember that PS2 game, Red Faction? Remember that? Meanwhile, in Call of Duty, you can't blow up shit. It's just so unrealistic. Enemy UAV overhead. Uh, okay, there, there is no universe in, in which that wasn't a headshot. Jesus. Remember you, Rambo. Your time will come. Okay, back to Battlefield. And I'm probably wrong about this, let me know. But, I mean, Battlefield may have been the first AAA first-person shooter game to really have, like, actual bullet velocity as a thing. A projectile would actually fly out of the barrel and travel across the map. Meanwhile, in Call of Duty, everything was just hitscan. The, the bullets are an illusion. It's basically just like a laser coming out of the gun. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of fun with the Modern Warfares and the Black Ops early on. But inherently, they're always, like, arcadey. Battlefield was always my number one. It's more realistic. Enemy UAV overhead. It's more of a sim, but still absolutely bananas. Gas is closing. Get to the new safe zone. Enemy UAV overhead. Okay, that was a lot of shooting, Enemy so UAV let's check our overhead. six to make sure no one is investigating. Enemy UAV overhead. And then Call of Duty eventually became too much of the same thing over and over, just rinse and repeat. Basically, it was like the Madden of first-person shooters, so I just left that shit entirely. Now fast forward to Modern Warfare 2019, and that was the first Call of Duty I bought in years. And why? Well, it was because of Warzone. Granted, it's still Battlefield light, but the sound design, the movement, shooting actual bullets instead of hitscan, I mean, all, all these things, they really stepped their game up. Look, this is just a very long-winded way to say that I really hope you're down for my future adventures in 2042. You're about to see me in my element, all right? And, and where do you think I learned that play, folks, right there? That's one of the oldest tricks in the Battlefield handbook right there. It's classic. Oh, and why we plant the C4 above the wheel like that is for two reasons. One, it mitigates the chances of the C4 catching a bullet. And two, it hides it from trophy systems. That truck had a trophy system right on top, front and center, and it didn't do shit. And if rumors are true about the new hazard zone, oh man, that could be a match made in heaven for your boy old Rosie. Some of you have asked that I dive into Escape from Tarkov, which always appealed to me. Shout out to Tristan. I, I hear you, brother. I hear you. Airstrike target marked. Take it out. But I don't think that's in the cards, given my setup. However, hazard sounds like it's going to be very much in that spirit. High stakes, tactics, stealth action gameplay. I mean, I'm, I'm in for that. I mean, that has no worries of Warden Bureau written all over. Now, having said that, rest assured, if Vanguard delivers with the new map, anti-cheat, and the upgraded Modern Warfare engine, the noise Warden Bureau will remain alive and well in 1945. Look, I've always been in the Nazi killing business, and brother, business will be booming. All right, all right, enough of all this chit chat. We still got a game to win. Now we have a couple options with this zone. Heading hillside through the overpass, it's not a bad idea. Enemy UAV 
But something is telling me Rambo went underground. Yeah, I haven't forgot about Rambo. Oh, and what do we have here? Rambo's got to be close. Okay, that, that, that's twice now with the headshots, Johnny. Final deployment is making ready. Your window's closing fast. Gas is inbound. Marking you safe zone. Shit. Where are you going, pal? You got a plane to catch? Well, allow me to punch your ticket. Straight to hell. <laughs> All right, let's double back and rotate from the west. The tarmac is not the move. Look, I respect the reach out, my guy. But your fate was sealed when you chose to look right instead of left. Only turn left. That's one of the most wonderful and terrifying things about Verdansk and the world as a whole, really. One seemingly innocuous decision, like looking one way instead of the other, could mean the difference between life and death. You know, some people can't handle this burden of choice. They're the human condition, free will, if there even is such a thing. In. Too many figs on the tree to choose from, and they become paralyzed. And it's this paralysis of choice that poisons the minds of rats into thinking that camping in an attic is the safe bet. But this is a lie. You'll have to make a decision eventually, or something or someone is going to make the decision for you. Do you want to be the decider or the decided? But you already know how we feel here at the Noise Warden Bureau. We make the quiet. Be advised, UAV is being Frank Costello really said it best. I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. Now here's a man of action. A crazy man. But you gotta respect the gusto. I love how you shut the door behind him downstairs. Like, you thought that was gonna help. It's really amusing sometimes what people do in a panic. All right, two left, one near cop, and one cowering in the cab of that truck. Oh, his last stands go, we were set up real nice in here. Let's drop this, grab that, and we're gonna go ahead and break this now, ensuring headshots retain maximum damage. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and close the doors downstairs. As they're being opened, we'll alert us if cop tries to break in. Gas is moving in. New safe zone located. Now, if we do hear a door open, we're going to pop Teddy, jump out the window, and flank them the same way they enter. Alternatively, if truck ends up killing cop, you rig the other truck down there with C4, and you already know how that story ends. Or a third scenario. Cop kills truck. And game over. Body bags there, just took one to the back of the head. He, he was a good sport about it. In the end game comms, he uh, complimented me on that shot. And I was sure to thank him for handling my light work with that truck. How badass is my girl Zayna, by the way? Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to report to you that we have cleared the 1K benchmark on YouTube. Now we just need around a thousand more hours of view time and we qualify to become partner. Thank you so much for your continued support. We, we literally could not do it without you, especially the OGs, you know who you are. And I also wanna give a special shout out real quick. For reasons unknown, the other night I ran a duo fill, something you know I never do, and I pair up with this crazy maniac by the name of Slater. And while we're vibing, he suggested that I check my YouTube notifications. 
And to my delightful surprise, I just cleared 1k and then some. Turns out he was streaming on Twitch and while off mic with me, he asks his chat to head on over to my YouTube channel for a little subscription bomb. A real mensch this fucking guy. And what makes this gesture even cooler is that earlier in the night, Slater himself was raided by Aiden and so was just paying it forward to me. It just goes to show you that when you throw an act of kindness out into this world, you never really know how far it might go. But you do know what comes next. Let's add a little reciprocity to this ripple effect, shall we? Slater's Twitch channel is linked below. Go hook my man up with a follow or a sub and make sure to tell him old Rosie sent you. Alright people, until next time, keep it quiet out there.